In this video, I'm going to show you five hacks to get the most sounds out of your guitar. While the pursuit of new gear is a noble and never-ending quest, sometimes we forget that when we have a multitude of, let's say, guitars or amps or pedals, anything like that, we tend to forget that each little piece of gear that we have has an entire spectrum of possibilities of sounds that it can grant us if we know how to use it. And a lot of times, especially when it comes to guitars, we'll have a guitar and we'll really just get one sound out of it. We won't really explore the diversity of what it can do. And if we do, it doesn't really go much beyond just switching the pickups. So today you're gonna to find out about some often overlooked hacks to get the most tonal options out of your guitar. And you only need just one guitar to do this. So going straight into hack number one, and this is true for virtually every electric guitar out there. So whatever you happen to own, this definitely applies to you. We're gonna talk about your volume knob. So more often than not, we think of the volume knob as exactly that, a volume control where when it's all the way off, you hear nothing until you slowly taper in the volume, have it all the way to 10, and you're at full volume. But what this causes most guitar players to do is only think of the volume knob in two capacities, right? It's either all the way off or all the way on. But with this first hack, we're no longer gonna think about the volume knob as a volume knob. We're gonna think of it more as a gain knob. For most of us, the volume control doesn't just deal in volume. We actually get different levels of gain depending on how we taper it. So check this out. If I have it on all the way on 10, I have my, you know, my tone set to be decent amount of gain. I would consider this my lead tone, right? So if I were to do a gig or a session or even a jam at home or with friends or whatever, this would be more of my lead tone because it's nice and saturated. You know? You know, that's a great tone, but I wouldn't use that for absolutely everything, especially if I were doing a gig or a session, right? I would like to have more diversity in my tone and in a way that doesn't involve having to do the tap dance choreography on my pedal board, especially because my pedal board is all the way over there, so I can't even access it right now. So this is strictly gonna be using the controls on our guitar to get the different sounds we want. And my rule of thumb when using the volume knob like a gain knob is to find three settings. Our clean setting, our rhythm setting, and our lead setting. That's simple. You can do an entire gig or a session with just those three settings. So we already know that having it dimed all the way to 10 is essentially gonna be our lead tone. That's where we have the most gain, the most saturation, and the most volume, right? Based on how I have everything else set up, right? So that's our lead tone. Now, if I wanted to find a rhythm tone, I would wanna dial it back a little bit, right? And check this out. When I start from 10 and slowly taper down the volume, you're gonna hear uh, there's gonna be gain loss too. And even though it does get a little quieter as you go down, it's not as drastic of a difference in volume as you might think. And that actually kind of plays in your favor because when you have a lead tone, typically that's when you want to be the most heard, especially if you're dealing with a full band mix or over a backing track or something, right? So you want your lead tone to technically be the loudest and most likely with the most gain, the most saturation, right? So as you heard, you're losing a lot of gain. You're, 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 the EQ curve is changing a little bit. Now every volume knob is different, so this is something that you want to experiment with on your guitars, right? But I know on mine, on this one especially, when I bring it down to about six, maybe even five and a half, that's kind of a good dirty rhythm tone, right? So if I wanted to do something like You know, it's it's hairy enough, right? So, you know, if that's the sound I'm going for, it's a nice dirty rhythm tone. I can even do like, you know, kind of riffs with it. So I can actually pull that off without the need of having to go all the way to 10. Because if I played that same thing, you know, it'll sound cool, but it's like, it's almost unnecessarily saturated.
you know, so I like to just kind of roll the gain back a little bit so that, you know, you still hear the pronunciation of the chords and the notes and everything, especially if you're playing like a single coil type guitar like I'm playing, you know, so you can kind of retain that brightness. So that's a perfectly passable rhythm tone and I would totally use that. So we have our lead tone at 10, got our rhythm tone at about halfway, right? And again, practice with your guitar, kind of just play a chord, you know, hold it out and then just kind of taper the volume knob and really listen, find those three spots, you know, cause like I said, every volume knob is different in the way that it's sort of um, dialed in, right? So we have our, uh, our lead and our rhythm tone. Now for our clean tone, when I say clean, that's a relative term. I don't mean like crystal clear, you know, like Fender Deluxe reverb kind of clean. Uh, because it, since I, you know, I, I'm kind of dialed, my bass tone has, has quite a bit of gain. So I can't expect to get, you know, pristine clean, but I can definitely roll back enough gain and keep the clarity in the notes, right? So right there, you know, that's um, that's kind of, you know, that's called that's called like, you know, na I've heard it called Nashville clean, where it's like it's not like pristine clean. It's kind of like edge of breakup clean. But in a band mix, the notes are clear enough that it actually almost registers as if it's clean, you know, because it just cuts through nicely. So when I say the word clean, I put that in quotes, especially if your lead tone is going to have a lot of gain. You're not you're never going to get like a, a pristine clean tone. At least I have never achieved that personally in any of my guitars because there's a certain spot where you just lose too much gain and too much EQ and then the volume really starts to dip. So in this case, say around three would be like my clean tone. So like I said, it's got it's got enough chime to where it registers as clean. It's got the, uh, um, you know, I still have, the, there's still the clarity of the notes and it's not too dirty to, you know, uh, sort of step on the toes of my rhythm tone. And there, you, there we go. We have three settings, right? Our clean, our rhythm, and our lead tone. And you can get through an entire gig without even having to touch your pedal board or your amp. Just focus on your volume knob as long as you start thinking of, thinking of it like a gain knob. Hack number two is for my single coil lovers out there as a way to use our tone knobs on our guitars to actually make our single coils sound more like humbuckers. Now, if you haven't already spent enough time with the tone knob and what it does on your guitar, essentially it's it rolls off high end, right? So it takes away the top end sort of chime and leaves room for more warmth, you know, some more low end, some more, um, you could even say lower mids in some cases. It really, again, it depends on the type of guitar you have, but for all intents and purposes, it does the same thing. When you roll your tone knob all the way back, you have this muffled like, like I just put a blanket over my amp kind of sound, right? And uh, that's something we'll get into a little bit later. But for now, I'm talking about just using a tiny bit of that tone knob roll off to kind of uh, tame the brightness of single coil pickups. So this particular guitar has single coils, but it's got a Tele bridge pickup and a Strat neck and middle. Now, uh, it's essentially configured to be like a Strat in the sense that it has one volume knob and two tone knobs. So if you have, let's say, a Telecaster, for example, where you just have the one tone knob, this still applies. We're just going to be focusing, if you have a Strat, we're going to be focusing on the tone knob that's, um, you could say, furthest away from you, right? That's the one that dictates the uh, bridge pickup on your guitar. And typically, especially Strat pickups, are known to sometimes be a little bit brittle and a little bit harsh in the top end, depending on what kind of pickup you have. And if that's something that you're currently dealing with, this is the perfect fix to allow you to actually love the tone, the natural tone of your Strat bridge pickup while kind of getting rid of those ice picky highs. So for instance, with this guitar, it's got all that single coil brightness I'm talking about, you know? <laughs> And that sounds great, you know, that's a great sound. But if I wanna, you know, tame that a little bit so that it's not like you're, uh, like what's that old saying, don't eat all the honey all at once, right? I don't wanna just like use up all of my good sounds. I wanna just kinda give and take away when I want to, right? Uh, I would just roll off gently on the tone knob to about, this guitar kinda likes it around, like between six and seven. And that, that uh, uh, top end is tamed. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as opposed to, you can hear like all that twang comes back when I bring the tone all the way back up. So when I bring it down, it takes on more of the character of a humbucker in the sense that it's rounder and warmer. And if I wanted to play some kind of like chunky rhythm, you know, something like that, you know, if I wanted more of a humbucker sound and, and, and I felt like the top end of the single coil would just be a little bit too harsh for something like that, or maybe even add too much character, which I think can be a thing sometimes, you know, having it, having the tone knob roll back is perfect. So this applies to strats, to tellies, virtually any single coil that you want to sound more like a humbucker just to get more warmth out of it. And if you got a strat, you know how we have two tone knobs on a strat usually, the uh, neck pickup is dictated by this tone knob. So it's unaffected usually if um, you have the uh, tone knob rolled back. So I got a little bit of grime on this pickup here. There we go. You got the tone knob rolled back on your bridge pickup because you wanted that to sound more like a humbucker, but you love the sweet, you know, uh, bell-like tones of a Strat neck pickup, and you want that to be, you know, unaffected. Then that's the beauty of having those two tone knobs, so you can get the humbucker sound with your bridge pickup, and the uh, neck pickup stays exactly where you want it to with the tone on ten. This hack can absolutely work for humbuckers as well. There's definitely such a thing as bright humbuckers, especially vintage voice humbuckers, which personally are among my favorite sounds. You know, I love vintage voice humbuckers and sometimes they sound like fat single coils. So you can apply that same sort of idea if you want to roll the top end down just to give it more of a chunkier sound. Hack number three is something I like to call the Insta Fuzz. So if you don't currently own a fuzz pedal, but you love that sound and you want to replicate it without having to buy one, all you got to do is take your tone knob and flip it to zero. When you roll back all that top end, you're left with nothing but woofy warmth. And it really emulates that vintage fuzz kind of sound, which is one of my favorite sounds. You know, it reminds me of like, you know, Spirit in the Sky, you know. You know, or take your pick. It could be American Woman, you know. You know, there's just, it just harkens back to that old school kind of sound. It's one of my favorites, you know, the 60s and 70s. So, you know, all you got to do is bring your tone knob all the way to zero, you know, particularly on the um, bridge pickup, because you'll retain a little bit more definition than if you did it on the neck pickup. A lot of times, if you want to go for more of a, like, clean, jazzy sound, you can roll back the tone knob in the neck position. But I'm not that much of a jazzer, so I'm going to stick with my rock and roll. The fourth hack also involves the tone control on your guitar, and it's to create a sweeping filter effect. This is something that guys like Hendrix and Roy Buchanan made really popular, and it's super cool. It's where you would especially bend a note, particularly like an oblique bend, where you're bending, um, you're, you're essentially playing two different notes, and one of the notes you're bending to is a different note, right? So, for example, uh, if I were to play uh, the 12th fret on the high E string, and I'm holding that note, and then I'm going to be bending the 12th fret on the B string to, let's say, the 14th fret, the pitch of the 14th fret. But I would keep the 12th fret on the high E string the same, and I'd play them both. Something like that, right? That's called an oblique bend, where you have essentially two different notes during a bend. Now this, for some reason, the way the frequencies interact, it's really obvious to get this filter effect. So if I were to hold that bend, right, I would play the notes, hold that bend, and then just go back and forth on my tone knob, it would sound like this. So it's like almost like a wah pedal, but not, you know, wah pedal being a type of filter. It just sounds cool. And I mean, you can go back and forth with it, or you can just do just one big swell. Just so that it opens up, you know, it's just a really cool thing to just bust out on the fly. Now, if you wanted to, you could totally do single note bends to get that filter effect, but it's going to be a lot less obvious, you know. You can hear that, you know, but in a band mix, it may not be quite as uh, upfront. So when you do an oblique bend, you can hear that, ah, like that, just like vocal quality to the filter sweep happening, you know? Now, depending on the type of guitar you have, the tone knob might be a good distance from the string, so it'll take some practice, but when you're doing these oblique bends, and you can just, you know, start with the example I gave you. 
it. You know? Just to kind of get used to playing the bend and then just, you know, physically moving over to the tone knob and then just going back and forth. It's definitely easier to go back and forth than it is to do just one big sweep. But, you know, I like to reach with my pinky first and then kind of pass it on over to my uh, my ring finger, you know, it's just kind of whatever feels natural to you. But, you know, when guitar players do this, especially when they do it fast, I mean, it's a sight to behold. And it's something that, like, I think would be super cool to have in your arsenal, especially if you're able to comfortably kind of get through it fast, you know, definitely will turn some heads. The fifth and final hack actually involves the pickup selector on your guitar, and it's to assign a sound to a position. This one seems a little overly simplistic, but hear me out. When was the last time you really spent time with your middle position? Be honest. I feel like for most of us guitar players, the middle position is like the last kid picked on the dodgeball team. For some reason, we just vastly prefer bridge and neck instead of the middle position. Now, I completely understand why, and I'm not trying to say that all guitar players do this, but I know from personal experience, for the first several years of my guitar playing life, I completely neglected the middle position. Of course, I've spent plenty of time since then making it up to the middle position by spending all kinds of time there. But my point is, is there's a lot that we're missing out on in terms of the sounds that our guitar can get. And all of the hacks leading up to this one can definitely have an impact as well. So when we're talking about assigning a sound to a position, right? When we're in the bridge position, there's all kinds of roles that that can play. Rhythm, lead, clean. We can essentially do everything that we need to do on the bridge pickup, right? But if you're not playing an Esquire or a single humbucker kind of guitar where you only have that option, you have more to work with, you know, don't neglect it because I'm telling you when the time comes and you're thinking, I want to get a different guitar and you think that you want to get a different guitar because you want to get you have access to different sounds, but this whole time you may have been missing out on the sounds that your current guitar can actually give you. So it's about time to explore all the sounds that we actually have access to before deciding to expand on our gear collection. So this is a Strat style guitar, right? So it's a five-way selector switch. Most guitars like Les Pauls and Telecasters will typically have a three-way selector switch where you have neck, middle, and bridge. On a Strat, you know, you have bridge, you have second position, which is bridge and middle. You have middle position. You have fourth position, which is neck and middle. And then fifth position being just neck, right? So whatever kind of guitar you have, we'll focus mostly on neck, bridge, and middle. But I'll also explain how in the in-between positions, kind of the sounds that I like to use. So we already, you know, we already covered bridge. That needs no uh, explanation, right? We already know the value of the bridge pickup. Now in the second position, you get kind of a twangier, throatier sort of sound, you know, compared to, you know, straight bridge. It's kind of a mid-range honk that comes along with it. So something like that is really cool. And I would use that kind of tone for like single note riffs, especially if I wanted an especially twangy kind of sound. You know? You know, and even with that, you know, I would probably roll my volume slash gain knob down a little bit to clean it up a tad. You know, something like that to me stands out more. It's more appropriate to what I'm actually playing instead of just using my lead tone to accomplish something like that. That's what I meant when I said how the other hacks really play into this one. So there's an example of assigning a sound to a position. So in the second position on like a Strat style guitar, I like to use it for that purpose. Now, if I bring it up to the middle position, uh, I like to use it for like shimmering chords. You know, uh, it's got that uh, mid range uh, honk, you know, similar to what the second position has, but way more pronounced because it's all middle pickup. So it'll definitely cut through a mix. If something has more mids, it'll cut through a mix, right? And I like to bring down uh, the volume slash gain so I can get more of a clean sound, right? And if I want to play shimmering chords, you know, I'll, I'll dial in like the clean tone that I want. You know, so something like that, you know, it's like I have a specific sound in my head and I know that the middle position can absolutely do that. So another thing that I see a lot of guitar players, especially Les Paul players, you know, because you're dealing with, you know, meaty humbuckers. So if a Les Paul player wants to play something a little bit cleaner, 
uh, or even a little bit funkier, you know, uh, they'll go straight to the middle position for that. And it works beautifully. Moving on, we have the fourth position if you're a strap player, and this is the Lenny sound, right? Stevie Ray Vaughan and now guys like John Mayer continue to make this sound famous if you're a strat lover. And what I like to do is to bring the gain uh, down quite a bit because I like the character of the of the position to really come through. So I'll kind of set it somewhere in between my clean and uh, rhythm um, setting on the volume slash gain knob, right? And you know, see where it's at there. Nice and sweet. And then making our way to, in my case, the fifth position or the neck pickup, right? Which like the bridge pickup needs no explanation. We love to use the blues, the blues. Neck pickup and the blues are pretty synonymous. So we love to use the neck pickup, especially when we're playing the blues, or even if you're a metal guy and you wanna play like sweep arpeggios and stuff, the neck pickup just has that really nice, very smooth kind of sound. Uh, so regardless of what genre you play, you get a lot of sounds out of the neck pickup. But I really wanted to focus on those kind of in-between positions, especially the middle pickup, because chances are you haven't been spending enough time with them. So there you have it. There are five guitar control hacks that you can take with you and really get the most sound out of the guitars you have. Doesn't matter if you have one guitar, or five guitars, or 20 guitars, or even more than that. You can apply these same principles to each and every one of those guitars, but if you only have one guitar, you can get pretty much any sound you want out of it. I know a lot of people that have a very minimum collection of guitars and somehow they're just able to get whatever sound they want. And there's something beautiful to me about spending, you know, dedicating that much time to really getting to know your instrument to where you feel like you don't really need to amass this whole collection of different guitars. I know I'm one to talk, right? But I really do appreciate that principle. And now that you have these five hacks at your disposal, it's time to put them to the test, which is why I'm giving you a free guitar cheat sheet that'll show you how to instantly solo in any key. This has helped thousands of guitar players learn how to play epic guitar solos in every musical key under the sun. There's no better opportunity to practice what you learned today along with what you're gonna learn here. So be sure to click here to claim your copy or check the link in the description box. If you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and be sure to check out our other relevant lessons right over here. I wanna thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.